Okay, hi guys. So this is my first episode of my podcast, and today's podcast is going to be leaning in and on my story. And I'm just trying to make this so other people can relate to it. And this is going to be my journey of finding myself and my building up my self confidence from the beginning, and my journey of self love, and then just trying to just trying to get you to know a bit more about me. So I always found since I'm a young age that I always I always felt different in some way. I always felt left out and from primary school, secondary school, college, I always found it difficult to make friends, mainly because I actually haven't met like my kind of people. And I found that ever since a young age, I always try and morph myself into a different kind of person to try and fit in. So like if the popular kids were talking about drinking, drugs, blah, 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 I always found myself talking about that too, even though I had no interest in it, just to try and make people find me and like me more. So Back in primary school, I think this is when primary school, this is where my actual insecurities started back then because I remember like the boys in my school, they made like harmless kind of jokes and they were slagging me because they're like, oh, your forehead's too big or you're just boring, blah, blah, blah. And then that kind of developed on into secondary school then as well. I found it hard to make friends too because all the people in secondary school were always talking about drinking or what they were doing on the weekends or what how many boys kissed, blah, blah, blah. And I had no interest in that whatsoever. But because I was so afraid of being left on my own, like I was in primary school, that I just, I joined in the conversation. I was like, oh yeah, I went out drinking too in the weekend, blah, blah, blah. I did this in the weekend, I did that in the weekend, knowing full well that I literally had no friends. And I was like staying at home all weekend myself. And that developed on then to college then as well. And I found no friends in college and I found myself being left out. Do you ever, do you ever think about like when you're in a group of friends and then you're like, there's three in the front and there's one in the background. I was always the person in the background. I was never the person that, like, was the front of the front of the group or never the person that was people liked. I was always left out. I was always the one walking by myself in the background. I was also just always being left by myself. And I just, it really did shape me to the person I am today because I never had any confidence in myself because I never actually had a proper friend. Even now, I don't even think I have one proper friend now. And it's, it's sad to say, like, but... Like I actually can't open my phone right now and text one person to go meet me on the weekend or do something on the weekend because I have no friends. I've never found my person like from primary school, secondary school, college. I've never had a proper true friend. And I just think it's it's really hard. Like it's it really does break down your confidence and it really does make you question yourself and question or who you were or, or anything like that. So yeah, in primary school, I remember there were people slag me saying my forehead's too big or I was too skinny or I had no ass, I had no boobs. I never developed my boobs back then, so none of the boys liked me. And there was one time, I still remember to this day, there was one time in primary school where I tri- my mum threw a birthday party for me. I think it was like my 10th or 11th birthday party. And I think the only person that showed up was my cousin. Even though all these people used to say what used to say to me, like, they're my friends. But yeah, no one showed up to my birthday party in primary school. And it seems kind of trivial now thinking about it, like, but... It was sad to me back then because I felt so isolated. I felt like no one liked me. No one wanted to be my friend. And I was always saying to myself, I was like, why? Like, I'm a nice person. I do. I'm a nice person. I do anything for anyone, but no one gives me the same back. And then I went on to secondary school and I was like, okay, my secondary school experience is going to be different. But ever since the second week of secondary school, there was people like me. There was boys like me. Same, same thing. They were saying, yeah, your forehead's too big or your eyebrows are too big. And anyone, I was like the class joke back then too. And then I found myself um, being friends with these three or four different girls. But I knew full well I had no interest in being friends with them because they didn't have the same similarities as me. They didn't have the same interests as me. But I was so afraid of being isolated again and being on my own that I just, I morphed myself into this different type of person, even though I actually wasn't like that. Like I didn't have the same ide- ideologies, is it? Ideologies as them or, yeah, I didn't have the same interests as them. But in fear of being on my own again, I morphed myself into this different type of person just to be liked and then eventually the girls realised that I actually wasn't going out drinking on the weekend I wasn't in this I wasn't in that and everything they wanted to do was to go drinking and I was like I have no interest in going drinking like for me I prefer to actually just go out to the movies with these girls go for a sleepover go go out for food do something that's actually interesting like you know and stimulating but I, since I didn't have the same interests as them this just stopped being friends with me then I found myself being isolated again on my own I was like why can't I just find a true proper friend and I still didn't and then I moved on from secondary school and then I found my, I could, didn't get into college because I didn't get enough points in my course so in fear of being left out again and not going to college like the rest of my friends I just went into some course that I didn't even like 
had no interest in whatsoever, but I didn't know what I wanted to do when the time came around and everyone was picking their courses. But I wanted to be in, like I wanted to fit in with the rest of the people. So I found myself just picking a random course for the sake of it, just to get into college. So I picked a random course, went into this like add-on year and the same thing happened again. Everyone was just instant interest in drinking, interest in boys. And I was like, oh my God, it was just so boring. Like, and I was like, oh, again, the same thing. Morphing myself into this different, pipe, different, pipe, different type of person that I'm not just to fit in and make some friends. Those girls eventually then turned to me as well. Don't know why, like, and yeah, I found myself by myself again. And then finally, anyway, I passed that course, went into college and I was like, okay, I said, surely I'm going to make one friend in this and massive university like surely I am and then I found that the course is way too big to actually find a clique of friends so I found myself by myself in college for like three or four hours breaks and myself and I just I was miserable inside there I actually was and I was just like I I don't even want to be here anymore so um yeah I think that kind of ruined my whole college experience like I loved the college I loved learning I didn't like the course obviously because I was in a course that I didn't want to do but I like the whole idea of being in college but the fact that I was by myself so long, uh, it just made me miserable. So I dropped out after a year. When I finished the year, I just never went back. And then, yeah, I was just miserable again. I just wanted a friend. That's all I wanted, really. I just wanted one person to go on, not so dates, but I wanted someone to go off and, you know, girlfriend dates or go shopping with, someone to go to the cinemas with, someone to just text, just someone to be there for me, like, you know. And I never found it. And... Yeah, that's when I went down the really dark depression route. I just found myself going to my full-time job, coming home, having no one to text, no one to go out with, no one to do anything with. But yeah, it was hard. But I actually had a boyfriend at the time. So I think he was the only person that I actually had and the only person I had to rely on because I had no friends. And I made it hard too when I had that boyfriend because I hadn't. he was my boyfriend since secondary school. Um, but... If I didn't have him in secondary school, I think it would have been just by myself. And it could have been hard on him too because he uh, he was the only person I had to rely on because I had no one else. Like So he was my whole source of like happiness, my whole source of doing something. So the fact that if I didn't have him, I'd be completely lost altogether. And I it was hard. Like I didn't actually think about it at the time. But he used to say it was always hard because he had loads of friends. He had loads of stuff to do. Like he, he had people to go out and meet. He did all this, that and other. But I actually had no one. So the fact... I actually didn't think about it until recently, actually, yeah. Um, the fact that he was always gone. He was my whole source of happiness, the whole source of anything I had to do. Like, so I was waiting for him to come home. I was waiting for him to go and do something with me because I had no one else. Like, and this, I mean, it's none of our faults, but it was just really, really tough thinking about it then. And we actually broke up last year. So that's when I finished the college and when I was completely not come back. And when he left, I was completely screwed altogether like I had no one like I had no one to talk to I had no one to meet up with no one to do anything with so I found myself going to my full-time job coming home and just staying in my room because I was actually moved out of home at the time so I just stayed in my room and I had no one to talk to I had no one to lean on so if you think about it then like having no one and being isolated in a relationship was tough but imagine like losing the person you're with for six years and then having no one else to rely on like literally no one else it was it was fucking tough like I was lost. I found myself just being depressed all the time. And my mental health literally just took a whole downward spiral from there. I'd go to work in a job from like six o'clock to three, come home, nothing to do. Like just sit in bed all day, just crying myself to sleep every single night. And my depression got really, really bad then. Like I found myself, it's disgusting to say out loud, like it's actually is, but if you're going through this thing, it's actually relatable to you. Like I found myself not showering, not brushing my teeth, not eating just being so depressed, like living in my own filth. Like I actually had to ask my little sister like once every couple of weeks to come home and clean my house for me. And my parents would just think I'm lazy. Like, why are you so lazy? Why not clean your room? I was like, I didn't want to tell them how bad it was. I was like, I'm actually not showering. I'm not sleeping. I'm not eating. I'm just living in my own filth because I literally had no motivation whatsoever to do anything at that time because I was already depressed by having no friends. And then add on the person that you're with for six years, like breaking up with you and leaving you on completely on your own. It was, it was tough, like, and I think that's when the second lockdown actually hit and it was, it was terrible, like, because all I was doing was coming home, coming, going to work, coming home, staying in my room all day, literally doing nothing whatsoever because you're locked in. Like, 
I felt like I was in a cage. And I was actually living in a room, living in a shared accommodation with two girls. And the two girls hated me as well. Like, so add that, that to the list too. It was, it was a really dark time in my life. And I just found myself wanting to change. I was like, I'm not actually living my life. I'm just surviving. Like, I'm not living my life. I'm not being happy. Like, I was like, I'm sick of literally staying in my room for the last six months, crying myself to sleep, not eating, not showering, not get, taking care of myself. And I wasn't brought up like that. Like, my mum always brought us up clean and healthy. Like, and I was like, this isn't how I was brought up. Like, I want to change. Like, I want to do something different. So I started slowly making these small changes. I was like, okay, tomorrow I'll clean my wardrobe. The next day I'll clean my bed. I'll wash my sheets. The next day then I'll finally wash my teeth. The next day then I'll wash my hair. And it was all these small little things I was doing over a, a period of time that add, added up to big successes. Like, that's what I always say, small little things, small little changes add up to these huge successes. So after a week then, I finally was clean. Then my room was clean. Then I was just, I was find myself trying to find happiness within myself on my own. Um, and then I started looking up meditations. So I was doing meditations. I was doing journaling. I was just trying to find some source of happiness. And then otherwise I was like, I'm going to be suicidal. I'll probably kill myself if I don't cop on. Like, And I was like, I don't want to die. I just don't want to die. Like, But when you're in that depression state, all you want to do is just live in your own field and literally die. But after a while, I kind of knocked myself out of it and started doing stuff that I love. So I was bringing myself on walks. I was bringing myself, listen to my favorite music again, watch my favorite movies again, cooking my proper food, like actually properly healing myself. And then um, I was sitting in my house, my mom's house one day and I was like, um, what was I doing? Yeah, I was just sitting in my mom's house one time and I was like, I wish I could be like a fitness influencer, I said, because I found that doing records in my room and actually healing myself was, was good. Like, and I said, I'd love to actually like teach other people like my experiences and my mistakes but I was just too afraid to do it because I think due to the rise of technology now social media is just everywhere like everywhere you turn like I saw like a 16 like what was no, one second there. I saw like a two-year-old before um a couple of weeks before and then she had an iPhone 11 in her hand I was like that's crazy I said she's fresh out of the womb and she has a phone on her hand like what the hell is going on everywhere now social media is everywhere and due to that we're constantly getting bombarded with all these like a plus, A star, like fitness influencers, everyone's showcasing their like the highlights. And every time I open my Instagram, I was seeing these like size zero models, like they were so tanned, beautiful. And I was like, I'm not like that. I was like, I don't want to start social media. I said, and people have slagging me like, who is this girl? Like doing it. I didn't want to be like that. I didn't, I was actually afraid, like I was af afraid of the fear of rejection. So that's why I held myself back and doing it. And I always knew in my mind I wanted to do it. Like I wanted to share my experiences, share my mistakes with people. Like I wanted to help people like love themselves again. Like, and that's what I wanted to do. So I held back on doing it. And then uh, lockdown ended and the gym is back open. So I went into the gym. I found that every single time I went into the gym and it worked out, it wasn't even to look a certain way. It was just for my head space. Like my head cleared immediately. It was crazy. Like, like I was so angry like going in and then I felt so free and rejuvenated and so I was like I wish like people knew like how to work out in a healthy way and I wish they knew that like gym isn't just for looking a certain way trying to get leaner or skinnier or a bigger bum or whatever it's really good for your mental health as well so that's what I just really wanted to do and I still held back on doing it and then in lockdown I just I decided to just make my page and I was like you know what I think, yeah, lockdown just happened again. So I was like, you know what? I say, I think it's actually scarier and more frightening holding back on your dreams and your goals than actually doing the thing itself. Like, I was like thinking to myself, I was like, why am I holding myself back from possibly changing even one person's life just because I'm afraid of rejection? Because people are going to have something to say regardless. So I might as well give them something to go talk about, you know? So I made it anyway. And I just started posting like, random stuff like my healthy meals I was making that day because I was like on a cut so I was starting my calorie counting I was showing them all my meals I was showing them all like what I was doing got off my mental health walks and stuff and people started to like it I was like oh okay so then I started getting my first 100 followers my first 200 followers and I just kept going up and up and there like people actually liked it and I still had that voice in my back of my head I was like why are people liking it are they just secretly judging me is that why they're following me like Rather than thinking that people like me for who I am, I was just thinking to myself, no, they don't like me. They're just slagging me or they're just trying to make fun of me. 
And that's just my, that's my own insecurity speaking out like from it. That's my own insecurities. That's not like what people actually think like, because you don't know what people think, but it's just a voice in the back of your head telling yourself that you're not good enough or you're not, you're not going to make it or whatever, but you don't know unless you try. So yeah, my, my fitness page took off from there and I started getting a good reaction and then it was slowly building my confidence over time. And I was like, if you go back on my fitness page, like two years ago, I didn't even post pictures of myself. I always had the camera up in front of my face. Like I always hid my face because I was so afraid of people judging me for that. Because throughout my life, people were always telling me like, oh, your body's like a 10 out of 10 and your si- your face is like a 6 out of 10. So I was so afraid of showing my face, but I was always showing my body. Because I was told, like whenever someone looks at me, they're like, oh yeah, you look so slim or you look so skinny. No one actually says, oh, you look beautiful or you look gorgeous, whatever. It's always my body like, so that's one of my downfalls. I don't have enough confidence in myself and I don't think I'm actually beautiful. Because I've been told so much that it's just my body. So that's another thing I had to work on too. I had to just work on finding myself, building myself up from the bottom and just becoming a better person for myself and being happy. And yeah, so due to being having no friends and um, going through my breakup as well, I had to find myself again. I had to find my, my own joy. I had to find who I am because I didn't know who I was without those people in my life. So I had to try and find me. Like, what do I like? Who am I? Like, what are my goals, my dreams, my aspirations? I had to find all of that myself. So that's when I started doing stuff on my own. Like, I never went to the cinema anymore because I had no one to go with. I never went to go watch movies I wanted to watch because I had no one to go with. I never went out for food because I had no one to go with. So I had to try and find myself. I had to get confidence in myself and go out and do these things by myself. So I slowly started incorporating that. Like I went out to the cinema myself for the first time a couple of months ago. I went out for food myself. I brought myself out for meals and it was scary enough going inside restaurants and just like, do you like a table for two? I was like, no, a table for one, just myself. And you do get the weird looks every now and again, people looking over you by yourself. But like, what's the point of not having a nice meal just because you've no one to go wait now? And I think a couple of months ago as well, I went on my first holiday because I wanted to go on holiday for a couple of years now and... I just never did it because I'd no one to go with and people look down on you if you want to go somewhere by yourself. So I just plugged up the carriage and I just jetted myself off to Tenerife and I had a brilliant time. It was amazing. I remember just waking up in the morning and I was going down for food. Then I'd go back up to my room, just lie out, get a tan, walk around the town and I went for water parks and went down to the beach and it was actually amazing. Like I just read books on the beach and had a great time. And then I came back and people were like, who'd you want holiday with? I was like, myself. And they're like, why'd you go by yourself? And I was like, why not? I was like, I have no one to go with. So I just brought myself. And then I got the weird looks like, why'd you go by yourself? That's so weird. I was like, how is it weird? I said, I went off on a holiday and had a great time by myself and I had no one to talk to. And, well, not no one to talk to, I had just no one to answer to. And I just did everything by myself and I had a great time. I came back with a nice tan and I didn't spend that much money. And then after that, um, I thought to myself, I was like, what other goals do I want to take off my list now? So I made myself a little checklist of things I wanted to accomplish by the end of the year. And this is actually one of them. And this is the one I put off for so long because it's, it's just, yeah, it's crazy just doing a podcast because like, does anyone actually want to listen to me? I was like, I'm not interesting enough and I'm not smart enough. But you know what? I did it. And one of the first things I did was, um, wrote down was my holiday. And I checked that off and then I wanted to do my YouTube and I did that as well. So I checked that off. And the next thing I wanted to do then was to be a personal trainer because it it's all well in games like, you know, doing your, your fitness page and your Instagram page. But there's only so much you can do on that because people just swipe through Instagram. They just don't actually spend time sitting there like listening to you. So I said I wanted to do a PT course and I wanted to become a full time PT because I just really wanted to help people like become the people that they were. I wanted them to love themselves again. I wanted them to have confidence in themselves. I wanted them to just be the best version of themselves possible. And you can't do that without a proper search. So I did that and it was it was really challenging like because I had a full time job and then I had to do like I was being bombarded with work all the time and then I had to drive up to Galway every Saturday, drive back down and it was really tough. Like it was a really intense 17 week course, but I think it was one of the best things I did. And it actually really, really helped my confidence because I actually believed in myself. I had to I believed myself. I realized the hard work really does pay off and it really, it really just really helped my confidence. And then I became a full-time PT. And then in the last couple of weeks, I got a personal training job and yeah, so I'm a, I'm a PT now as well. 
And it is really tough because, again, I have my full-time job and then I have my clients in the evenings and then I have that up Monday to Saturday. But it really does pay off. Like, if I don't think you actually work that much if you do something that you love. Like, I don't find it work. Like, I find it enjoyable for me because I'm helping people become the best version of themselves and then I'm helping them to have a healthy relationship with fitness and with themselves. And one of the most common things people ask me when I'm a PT is like, how do I lose weight healthily? And how do I you know, incorporate calorie counting if I don't like it? And I tell them about my journey too, because when I first started off in this whole Instagram game, I was, as I said, I was being bombarded with like all these size zero models. They were tanned, they were like, they were perfect, they were lean, they were, they were lean and they were toned and big massive asses and everything. I was like, Jesus, I was like, how can I compare to that? Like, I'm like a little nobody in Ireland. And I said, these are like really famous influencers abroad like I was like I can't compare to that but I just realized that they don't look like that all the time like everyone's just showing the highlights no one's showing the bad days no one's showing them coming on like greasy hair you know when they're sweatpants eating a pizza on the couch like they're not doing that they're posing themselves in the gym like pumped up they're posing themselves with great angles like behind every everyone I tell this to everyone like behind every good picture you see is like a thousand bad pictures and when they look at that good picture, they think to themselves like, oh, I could look better here or my hair is out of place or I don't look as well as I think that I do. Like no one's shown the bad highlights, like it's all good highlights. And anyway, if you look at someone's picture, it's really highly, it's highly edited as well. Like, so you can't compare yourself to someone that's not even real, like, because that's not real. That's not people in their real life. They don't show themselves in the bloated and the periods or they don't show themselves in the bad days. They always show themselves on the good days. So that's one of my main things when I started my Instagram. Like I come on all the time and I, I never edit my pictures. Like what's the point of me like being someone fake? My whole reason behind doing this was to show like people that you can be yourself and people can love you for it. Because I wanted to do that. Like I didn't want to come on here and show myself like always good and toned and like, you know, tanned and skinny and perfect hair. Like I didn't want to be fake. I want people to love me for who I am and people love me for who I am. It's going to give me more confidence and it's going to make me realize that. You know, I can be myself and be loved. So you can't never compare yourself to someone on Instagram because, as I say, it's fake. Like, And yeah, that's one of my main reasons for setting my page. Just want to be myself. Show my people that you can be yourself too. And there's no point hiding behind layers of makeup and layers of tan and highly edited the pictures because when you go into real life and someone looks at you, you're going to be like, you don't look like that 600 likes on Instagram, you know? You don't look like that at all. So just be yourself and just don't be fake and... People will love you for who you are. And people ask me too, like my, the main question I get on my Instagram is how did you get the courage and the confidence to set up a page? Like I want to set up a cooking page and I'm afraid to do it for fear of being judged. And that's all it is. People are just afraid to do something because they're afraid to step outside the norm and step outside like the normal people in their area. Like like I'm a little nobody from somewhere in Limerick and I set it up my page and I don't care. Like, But when I started doing it, I did care. Like I was too afraid of doing it because I was afraid of being judged. And I was like, you know what, it's actually more frightening and more scary to hold back on your dreams and hold back on what you want to do and out of fear of being judged. When, as, as I said before, people are going to judge you anyway, so you might as well do it. Like if you want to set up a cooking page, do it. If you want to set up a fitness page, then do it. If you want to do a makeup page, then do it because life's too short and your life can literally end tomorrow. So what's the point to have living in regret and living in fear? So just do what you want to do. And you just have to fake it until you make it. Like, I'm not coming on my page every single day and I'm confident. Like, I'm constantly looking at pictures of myself and I was like, oh, that's such a bad angle of my face or I don't look like this. I don't look as well as I wanted to do. But, you know, no one's going to be confident every single day of their lives. But you might as well just do it now. And you just have to spend more time finding and loving yourself and chasing your goals and just don't care what other people think. The main thing is what you care about yourself and how you feel about yourself and if you're proud of yourself and if you want to do something then do it and you're the real friends in your life and the real people that actually care about you will stand beside you and love you regardless so I just tell people to go for it like life is way too short to hold back on what you want to do just because you're afraid of being judged so who cares what they think like there are nobodies to like at the end of the day once you actually are proud of yourself and you think to yourself yeah I really want to do this and you really want to work for it, then go for it. Because as I said, life can just end tomorrow. So what's the point to hold them back? Just go for it. Like I started off as a little nobody with no confidence. I was so insecure about myself. I never liked myself. 
And now in the space of like eight months of actually working myself and putting down the effort, putting in all the work for it, I'm now, I'd say, semi proud of myself and semi in love with myself. Like I'd say 90, 90% of myself. And yeah, that's all from actually doing what I like, doing what I, that's actually from doing what I like and putting in the work and grinding for the life that I want. So yeah, I just say to go for it and don't hold back in your dreams. Just go for it. So yeah, I think I'll just wrap it up there because I am sweating inside this and I'm just getting so tired. <laughs> but yeah, I, I hopefully someone can benefit from my, me telling my story and hopefully it wasn't too awkward because this is so nerve-wracking. And yeah, if this is good, then you can let me know and you can follow me on Instagram. My name is literally just Rebecca Buston underscore. And you can go on there and tell me what you'd like to hear next. And yeah, so thanks very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.